In this video, we'll be focusing on statistics, past paper questions, and we will be looking at grouped data. This is part one. There are more videos based on this linked in the description box below. Let's jump right into these questions. First of all, we can see that this is representative of grouped data because we have different classes or intervals or groups represented over here. Now, I just want to mention what this means, and I just want to explain in case you've forgotten. This says the table below shows information about the number of hours 120 learners, so that's the total number of learners, spent on their cell phones in the last week. If you add up all of these frequencies over here, you should get 120, which you do. So if they don't give it to you in the little story up here to get the total number of learners or total number of data points essentially in the study or this experiment or whatever this is, you add up the frequencies. And remember what the different classes or intervals tell me is that 10 students spend between zero hours and two hours on their phone. 15 students spend between two hours, but not including two hours, and four hours, including four hours on their phone. It is very important to be aware of the symbols that they use here. So, for example, things that could fall into this category would be not including zero, so maybe 0, 0,1 hours, 0, 0,2 hours, all the way up to and including two hours. So, if you spend two hours on your phone, you fall in the top class or the top interval. If you spent more than two, not including two, but less than four, but including four. See, including because it's equal to, you fall in the second category and so on. Okay, identify the modal class. Now, remember mode, that's the value that appears the most. So the modal class will be the class or the interval with the highest frequency. So the modal class would be this one because it has the highest frequency of learners. So the modal class would be this. You just simply write it out. My next question asks me to estimate the mean number of hours that the learners spent on their cell phones in the last week. So mean is average. You should think we're dealing with grouped data. I need to work out the estimated mean. And remember how we do that is as follows. We take the midpoint of the first interval, multiplied by the frequency of the first interval, put that in a bracket, then we say plus. We take the midpoint of the second interval times by the frequency of the second interval, and we carry on doing this for the numerator. And in our case, we will do it the following number of times, one, two, three, four, five, six, because I have six intervals or classes. So essentially, I'm going to have six brackets in my numerator. In order to do this, I need to find the midpoint of each of my intervals. So I'll do that in, that in a second, and the frequency of each interval is given. And then we divide it in the denominator by the total n. That's the total number. And we add all the frequencies together. So it's 120 because we already were given that at the beginning of the question. As you can see over here, 120 learners. If you add all the frequencies together, total number of data points, learners is 120. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend my table over here and I'm going to work out the midpoint of each interval. So the midpoint of the intervals, remember how we do that is we take the two boundaries of the interval. So 0 plus 2 we divide it by 2. So 0 plus 2 divided by 2, the midpoint of that first interval is 1. Next one, 2 plus 4 divided by 2, which is 4 plus 2 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. The midpoint of that interval is 3. So you take the upper boundary, the lower boundary, add them together, 6 plus 4 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. And we keep going until we've gotten the midpoint of all of my intervals. There we go. And for these intervals, they're actually very easy to see the midpoints. For, for example, this interval, it goes 10 to 12. So 10, 11, 12. The midpoint is obviously 11 and so on. But we need these midpoints. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the midpoint of the first interval multiplied by the frequency of the first interval. So 1 times 10. And then we're going to do it for the second interval. 3 times 15 in its own separate bracket. 3 times 15, and you're going to do it for the third interval. 5 times 30, and you're going to keep going for all of your intervals. There we go. I should have six brackets, which I do because I have six intervals, remember? And we divide it by the total, which is 120. Type it carefully onto your calculator, and you should get 730 divided by 120, which equals to 6,08. 
Here's another question. I want you to pause the video, try it yourself, and then mark it with me. In this question, they say the intelligent quotient score, which is IQ, just by the way. So the IQ score of a grade 10 class is summarized in the table below. And again, here are my different intervals and the different frequencies. In this case, they didn't tell me the total number of grade 10 learners that took part in this little data handling collection over here. So to get the total, we have to add all of these numbers together. So we know the total number of grade 10s is 30. Okay. Write down the modal class of the data. Now again, modal class, mode, the one that appears the most. So in which class or in which group or interval are there the most grade 10s? And you can see that there's the most grade 10s lying in this interval. There's eight. Eight is the biggest number out of all these frequencies. So 2.1's answer would be 100, like that. Write it just as you see it, just like that. The next question is one we haven't done yet. Determine the interval in which the median lies. Now, remember, we don't have the entire data set. I don't know what that data set looks like. I know that there are four grade 10s that fall within this interval, but I don't know what their IQ is. It could be um, 90, 90, 90, and maybe 98, but it could also be 90 maybe 97, 98, and 99. We don't know what the data set looks like. All we know is that there are four grade 10s in this interval, eight in this interval, and so on. So finding the median is very different to how we do it with ungrouped data. Basically, how we have to find the median in this case is we have to use the following formula, half n plus one, this will tell me the position of the median. Remember, not the median itself, just the position. And n is the total number of data points. So remember, we add up all the frequencies to give me n, it's 30. So it's half 30 plus 1. Remember, 30 plus 1 is 31. So it's half of 31, which is 15.5. Okay? Now remember, what this tells me is the position of the median. So the median will be the 15.5th data position. So remember, the first four grade 10s lie in the first interval. One, two, three, four, the first four grade 10s. We are looking for the 15th, 15th, 16th grade 10. So between the 15th and the 16th grade 10, that will be where my Q2 is, my median. So the first four lie in the first interval, so the median is obviously not there. Then the next eight lie in the second interval. So we've got four already. The following eight, which gets me to 12 grade 10s in total, lies in the second interval, so it's not there. Then we've got the next seven grade 10s lying in the third interval. So 12, it'll be the 12th grade 10, the 13th, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and so on. So the first four lie in the first interval, the next eight, bringing me to a total of 12 grade 10s, lie in the second interval. Then the 13th, 14th, 15th and 16th lie in the third interval. I hope this makes sense. It's a little bit of a weird one to understand and a little bit of a weird one to explain. But basically, between the 15th and the 16th grade 10, that is where the median lies. And the 15th and the 16th grade 10 learner lies in this interval over here. If that was a little bit confusing for you, let me explain it like this. Going back to our table, the first four grade 10s, remember frequency is four, have an IQ of between 90 to 100. So that would be this grade 10, that one, that one, and that one, four. Frequency of four, that's my first interval. So that interval is done. Then the next eight, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to this person over here, the 12th person. Those people lie in the following interval, the 100 to 110. Eight people in total lie in that interval. Then the next seven lie in the interval that follows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and also the 19th person. The next seven people, because it says frequency of seven, have an IQ of between 110 and 120, not including 120, obviously, like that. And remember the median, this formula told me that the position of the median was between the 15th and the 16th person. So here's the 15th and the 16th person. The median is over there. So that means that it's between the 15th and the 16th person, which happens to fall in the third 
interval. So that is 110 to 120. Our next question, once the estimated mean, estimate the mean IQ score. Remember, just like we did in the previous example, we need the midpoint of each of the intervals. How do we find the midpoint? Add the two ends of the interval together. So 90 plus 100, and we divide it by two. You'll do the same for the next one. 100 plus 110 divided by two, and so on. These are my midpoints of all of my intervals. And then remember what we need to do is we need to take the midpoint of the interval multiplied by the frequency. And I have six intervals once again. So I'm going to have six brackets in my numerator and I divide it by the total of the frequency, which is 30. So I got 116 as my estimated mean. Just make sure that you have six brackets at the top because you have six intervals. And obviously make sure you work out the midpoint of that interval correctly. Please remember to look at other links in the description box below for more past paper practice videos. I hope you are subscribed and I hope to see you very soon. Bye everyone.